Uh, this talk will uh, focus more on describing um, uh, a pipeline and how do we come up with this pipeline uh, to solve the problem of predicting uh, product attributes uh, from descriptive text and images. So it not, will not be a very uh, technical talk. Okay, uh, so a few words about uh, the Rakuten group. Um, so Rakuten is a global uh, leader in internet services that it was established about 25 years ago uh, in Tokyo in Japan. Uh, initially uh, known as a marketplace, uh, but it has since then expanded to uh, provide a lot more services. Uh, some of them and the main one are represented here like Rakuten Viber, uh, Rakuten TV advertising, etc. And it has today about 1.6 billion users across the world and uh, over 28,000 employees um, and operations in 30 different countries. I'm part of uh, what is called RIT, Rakuten Institute of Technologies, uh, which focuses on research and using machine learning to power uh, different Rakuten services. Okay, um, so uh, here are a few examples of uh, product attributes. Um, so in this screenshot of the Ichiba website, um, you can see a number of filters uh, that we will refer in this talk as uh, the product attributes. Uh, so these filters are very important for users to narrow down the number of uh, research results they have and to quickly uh, reach the items they are interested in. So it may seem surprising, uh, but actually this information about product attribute values is often missing in practice because the merchant do not necessarily provide this information as often they have to enter a big number of items in thousands or hundreds of thousands. So they don't necessarily uh, spend a lot of effort in providing all this information. So for example, uh, for the Rakuten uh, fashion category, uh, only about half of this information is available or only about half of the items have uh, product attribute values for color. Um, which means like, as you can see in the example here, if you filter uh, the items to only show the green t-shirts, those t-shirts that did not have the color available will never show up uh, uh, in those results. And in addition to being missing, we also observe that often or sometimes I would say that this information about attribute values is actually not accurate. As you can see in the same example, uh, even though we have filtered for green items, uh, we can actually get some of the examples uh, which are not um, green, some of the t-shirts which are not green. Um, so to solve those issues, we have to resort into automatic prediction of those attribute values from unstructured data. And this can be the descriptive text and images which encode or represent this information in some way. So uh, let me show you the global architecture of the pipeline that we presented. Um, so it consists of encoding images using um, deep models, uh, dense net here, encoding textual information using BERT, and then merging modalities, uh, which will be the main focus of this talk as this is the part where uh, we brought the main contributions and then having a sort of classifier to predict the attribute values. Um, so the architecture overall may seem obvious, um, but in this talk, I will try to focus on how did we come up to this solution? As you know, when it comes to practice, you have so many models. There are so many ways you can combine these models. So how, would, how do you decide or uh, how do you choose which model to use and how to combine this model? So our approach is uh, driven by two main research questions uh, that I, we will see shortly. Um, so the first thing we had to make clear is whether we need to take a multimodal approach or not. Like if, for example, we can only use the textual information to predict these attributes values, why would I 
why would we use a complicated model by including the images uh, to predict these um, attribute values? So the first research question is on more like which model and modality we can use. And in order to answer this question, we first need to build solid single modality models, as well as perform cross modality comparisons. Now the second one, if the answer to the first one is positive, is how do we combine these modalities together uh, to have a unified architecture? And again here, there are a number of aspects we need to consider as for a given item, one modality can be more relevant than the other one. Also, the magnitude of the textual representation and image representation can be very different, which poses some uh, technical challenges. And lastly, uh, we can face the problem that we refer to in this work as modality collapse, meaning that we can end up with a multimodal uh, architecture, but which in the end ignores one of the modalities. And we will see uh, later why this can happen. Okay, uh, so I will briefly describe uh, the single modality architecture that we use as a building block to encode every modality. So the first one is text, and here we compared the number of approach, including bag of words, CNN models, and BERT. In the end, BERT model offered the best performance, but it was not obvious in the beginning for a certain number of reasons. So first of all, uh, when you use the BERT language model, you have to decide on what would be the final representation for the downstream task. So often people in the literature, for example, recommend to use the CLS token. Uh, in our case, it was performing uh, worse than the other two models, CNN and Bag of Word, uh, but taking all the embeddings of all the tokens and combining them using a sum turned out to work better. And the second aspect, which was important, is the model you put on top of BERT for the downstream task. It had to be as simple as possible. And here we used a linear transformation on top of this model. Like we observed that the more complex the model we put on top of BERT, the more chances we destroy all the pre-training uh, of this model, because we have to update a lot of parameters, meaning we will be backpropagating a lot of noise in the beginning uh, to the rest of the model. So those two aspects were really critical in our case. And then the fine tuning, which need to be uh, really gentle and soft, especially in the beginning of the iterations. And for that, um, uh, we ended up using uh, a learning scheduler uh, to perform this fine tuning. Uh, for the image model, uh, we compared two architectures, uh, DenseNet and ResNet, and uh, the former one worked better. Um, compared to the text part, uh, the model was quite robust to uh, fine tuning um, so in the end, we end up using exactly the same strategy as uh, for the text model. Um, and the reason we choose to do that is uh, we thought that if we are going to combine these two models into a multimodal architecture, the text part of the architecture should not, should not be penalized uh, by the fine tuning and the classifier. All right, so now coming to... Um, the second part of uh, the first research questions on which modality performs the best. Uh, we uh, try to um, check the results per item. So in the figure here, you see that the green bar represents the number of item for which the text model performs better. Uh, the blue one represents the number of item for which um, the image model offers the best performance, and the orange bar here represents the number of times both modalities perform equally. So clearly, which modality performs the best is item dependent. It depends on which item you are trying to make the prediction for. We see that on most of uh, the cases, the text model seems to perform better, because obviously extracting uh, information from images is more challenging, but we observe that there are also many items for which using the image model 
uh, performs actually uh, better. So for us, uh, this was a strong empirical evidence that we should consider a multimodal approach because this two information can be complementary for the problem of attribute value prediction. So uh, then we come into um, the part where we have to combine these two informations. Um, so based on the previous results that which modality is better is item dependent, we thought that the way we combine these modalities should reflect this aspect, meaning that how we combine text and image should be item dependent. So then we come up with this merger that we refer to as the modality attention merger um, uh, for obvious reason of why we call it like that. So the intuition is that it gives the model the flexibility for a given item to choose whether it will rely more on the image or more on the text to predict the item attributes. So you can see uh, the architecture here. It takes as input the image and text representations, uh, push them into um, an attention network that will predict the probability that the image or the text is more relevant to predict uh, the color, for example, for this item. And the formulation details here are as follows. So the most important thing to keep in mind here is that once you get this probability of the relevance of text and image, you reweight the corresponding representations before concatenating them. So you can imagine like in the extreme case where for a given item only the image is relevant and the attribute value information is missing from the text information that the model will assign a weight close to one for the image and a weight close to zero for the text. Right. Um, while that approach worked great and showed that the model was indeed able to identify, and I have to stress that in an unsupervised way, meaning that when we train the model for a given item, we don't know which modality is important. So the model learns to decide on which modality to use in an unsupervised way. So while it worked great, it actually exacerbates the problem that we refer to as modality collapse. So what we refer to uh, here is when the model actually gives a very high weight to one modality for all items and then a very low weight for the other modality meaning ending up making prediction based on only one modality. So to mitigate this problem, uh, we introduce a regularization scheme. So let PJ represent the uh, attention distribution on the importance of text and images, and let Q represent a uniform discrete distribution. So we regularize the uh, cross entropy loss uh, by adding a KL divergence uh, which measures the divergence of PJ from Q. So the goal here is to encourage the attention distribution to spread its mass across the different modalities. I did not put the details here, but we can show that this regularization is equivalent to maximizing the entropy of the attention distribution and hence um, making it softer and preventing it from collapsing into um, the degenerate case where uh, one modality gets a probability of one and the other one a probability of zero. All right now, I will present some results on uh, three uh, internal data sets uh, that we call Rakuten Ichiba material, which means the goal is to predict the material of uh, a given item, whether, for example, it's cotton, it's leather, and there are 57 possibilities, a Rakuten color, for uh, color prediction, and then the record and ENS, uh, which is a data set released for a competition in Ecole Normale Supérieure in 2001. Um, and the main difference is that this last data set is not focused on fashion, but it spans more categories uh, across the Rakuten catalog. So our evaluation metric were driven by the business requirements. Um, so the business wanted to improve the coverage 
of attribute values at a very high precision, which is 95%. Um, so then we choose to use recall at precision 95, which actually reflects or which is consistent with the business requirement. And for completeness, I will also report F1 score. And then we use standard evaluation procedure, train test validation splitting. Okay, so first is cross-modality comparisons. And the most important things to retain here is that on average, the text model is superior to the image one. And the gap, we observed that the gap is much more important on material, which can be expected as it's very challenging to be able to extract which material an item is just based on the image. Like different material on the image may look the same for humans. And then, importantly, in all cases, uh, the multimodal architecture we propose uh, offered best performance, suggesting again that the text and image information can be complementary and not redundant. And then on the effect of the modality attention merger we propose, the modality attention merger here offers better performance than concatenation. So we have also investigated other strategies like averaging the representation, but concatenation was really a strong baseline. Simple, but worked quite well. So improving over this baseline was quite um, interesting for us in terms of performance. Interestingly, we observed that simply concatenating the text and image modalities in some examples in some, on some data set can result in uh, suboptimal performance. So for example, on, uh, so for example, on the color data set, the text only image, and I reported here in the caption, uh, the previous performance, it's actually performing better than the multimodal approach where you do simple concatenation. Okay, now, on the effect of the KL regularization, uh, here we report the distribution of the attention weight uh, per date sets. And I don't know if it's very visible here, uh, but for every figure, uh, you will see on the left, uh, on the left box plots, uh, the regularization parameter lambda is set to zero, which means you are not using this regularization. And on the right one, um, it's set to a certain number that we determine um, based on the validation set. So what is interesting to observe here is that on material, you can see that the modality collapse is quite severe because you see that the image model uh, receives, or the image, uh, component receives much higher weights, close to one compared to the image modality. <clears throat> and then uh, using the KL regularization here seems to alleviate this problem and it also translates to better performance in practice. Um, one thing I wanted to highlight is like how to gain insight into when this modality collapse can happen. So if we look at the material data set, and if we look at again into the performance per modality, we see that most often on material, the text only model performs better than the image model. And this is true for most of the items. So this is a reminiscent of the problem of imbalance in classification. If you have a two classification problem with a very big class, you may end up learning a model which always predicts that an item or a given sample is from the bigger class. And it's exactly the same phenomenon happening here with modalities. So just by checking this per sample uh, performance, you can actually get a sense of whether the model can actually fall into this modality collapse case or not. Um, now here are some qualitative examples on whether the attention merger is able to capture useful information or not. So here we see an example where the model assigns a high weight for the text modality. And if we look at the textual description here translated in blue, we see that the information about color is available in text. Maybe it's less obvious to extract from the image as we have also some 
other colors uh, than gray, which was the main color reported for this item. Uh, for this other example, uh, we don't have the color information in the textual description, and the model seems to do a good job in assigning much higher weight for the image modality compared to uh, the textual modality. And finally, on this example where a human would be able to guess that this item is actually black based on the image or the text, because the information is available in both of them, it seems that the model preferred to assign higher weight for text. And this is related to the uh, modality collapse that I was talking about. It's just because the model is more biased towards the text modality. As on most item, we saw that it was the best performing one. Uh, so in order to push this model in production, so in addition to this offline experiments, we had to um, uh, push the model through a number of human evaluation. So the first one um, was actually to ask human experts whether the predictions of the model made sense or not for a given item image and description. And in 97% uh, of the cases, the answer was yes, which means that the model predictions made sense for the users given the item. Okay, so we also considered another type of evaluation, which is this time less biased, because we are not showing the model output to the users, but we just ask the human experts to annotate uh, 5,000 samples. And then once we got these annotations, we treat this sample as a test set and then evaluate our model on top of it. And in terms of uh, precision and recall 95, the, the results were consistent with uh, the one I reported for the offline evaluation, which allowed us to um, uh, put this model in, in production. Okay, so then um, in terms of coverage, um, so what I mean by coverage here is that an item who has at least one attribute value available, so if you have an item that has multiple colors, for example, if at least one of the color is reported, it's considered to be a covered item. So after using um, our model, we were able to improve the coverage by 45%, which was quite a huge uh, for the fashion subcategory in Rakuten Ichiba. And this analysis is a generalization that we made based on 100K uh, samples, items that were provided to us by uh, the business team. Okay, so um, we have also run several comparison with existing architectures. Uh, more recent multimodal architecture, more complex one. Um, our approach turned out to be uh, better in terms of recall at Precision 95. Um, I invite you to see our preprint uh, in which we report a lot more details and motivations and justifications behind um, some aspect of this architecture, as well as more results and comparison on benchmark data sets. Um, as some interesting perspectives could be like considering other models to represent the text or images. So vision transformer, for example, that we have considered uh, handling multiple attributes simultaneously. So in our case, the business insisted that we provide one model per attribute, but we know that if you have hundreds of attributes, it will quickly become complicated to train hundred models to solve this problem. Um, so we are also considering like one model to uh, predict a lot of attribute types, including color, material, brand, size, etc., cetera, uh, using a multitask uh, approach. And more importantly, speed up inference time. The inference time is quite reasonable, uh, but we, also, we are also considering using uh, distillation and quantization to make it even faster as hundreds of millions of items uh, are expected to be pushed through this model. Um, so this is uh, some references that are relevant for this work. 
As I said, the first one is our preprint, and you can find a lot more references there and details about this work in case you are interested. And thanks a lot for your attention. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to try to answer them. Thank you.